then we had a um, discussion going on this week. Uh, autopilot for existing devices, right? Yeah. So that's been an interesting one. I know you covered that a little bit last week. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a rundown of it? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically the change that was made here after some um, uh, lively discussion uh, about a month ago on uh, social media is that if you are blocking Windows uh, personal devices from enrolling into Intune, the autopilot for existing devices scenario has changed a little bit. If you're blocking personal devices, you must uh, register your device into autopilot before actually going through the enrollment process. In the past, you could simply drop a JSON file into a specific directory on an operating system, and that device would know exactly which deployment profile to use and go ahead and go through the enrollment process without you registering. Um, that still works if you are not blocking personal devices. However, if you are blocking personal devices, you will need to uh, register the device ahead of time. Uh, Steve Weiner did a really nice uh, video on this last week that I think we shared, mm -hmm. um, where basically you can use the get Windows Autopilot info uh, script with an online switch in order to register the device ahead of time. Or you can create a custom script, of course, using Microsoft Graphs and PowerShell. I also still think, I haven't had a chance to test it, though. I, I think the provisioning package route is still working. Um, so someone mentioning that on Twitter earlier today. Uh, just to prove a point earlier this uh, afternoon, in fact, while I was on stage <laughs> together with uh, Mike Terrell, uh, I went to a tenant that was not locked for personal devices or enrollment device restrictions for personal devices. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to successfully both uh, enroll a device uh, using that method. That was a very dark screen. <laughs> Hy-PV does that at times. Yeah. So give me a moment and I will um, reconvince it to, to uh, show something. The normal standard amount of VMs that one has on a Hyper-V lab node, of course. Uh, yeah, I've reduced it a lot of bit. A lot <laughs> of but yeah, so this is Frank that has been enrolled, and then my other VM was actually in the uh, uh, out of box experience phase of autopilot, and this one was staged using the following technique. Uh, we call it autopilot fast because it stole a borrowed. A script from Michael Niehaus that will, in fact, uh, uh, adjust the uh, autopilot profile a bit. I have that script right here. And what it does, it also injects the computer name that you had on the device and add that to the JSON file. And then it continues and basically just copies that file to the location and then uh, remove the NFM file. I'm injecting some drivers here as well. And then that machine came up in, I don't know, five, six minutes. Uh, into the state here. So quite beautiful solution, but again, devices like unfortunately that that's not available. All right. 